Hi, my name is Tim. I'm Senior Application Specialist at HRSoft. In today's and next webinar, we will have a look at Custom Tools 2017 features and enhancements. And I can tell you that if you are working with sheet metal uh, and need to output DXF files, then you are going to fall in love today. With me today, I have my wingman, the Foreign Minister of Sales, Sales Manager, Mr. Francois Simon, and he is going to take care of your questions. Uh, you can use the chat box in the GoToWebinar panel. I'm going to make room after the session for more questions to let you follow this presentation better. We expect the webinar to take somewhere in the range of 25 minutes. It might be a bit shorter or it might be a bit longer. I'm not entirely sure about that because we added some stuff that is not in my preparation. So let's see how it goes. Um, the webinar is being recorded right now and I will make it available online later on. Okay, let's get started. For the sake of PowerPoint, I have listed here the items I'd like to show you today. We will show features from SP1 as well as SP0. So some of this you already have and some you will have in a not so far future. And I can tell you, the things that we now automate for sheet metal work is just tremendous. Um, yeah, not going to cover these items in detail. I'm going to run that live instead. Um, there are also other things that I like to show, for instance, a tool that we have had for quite some time, uh, at least since 2011 version, I think, but we have never really promoted it. Uh, if you are programming your CNC machines manually, then we have a small thing you need to know about. Then a quick heads up about some printing options that you have to know exist already. You might even get a sneak peek at a new product we have available, but the full rundown will be a dedicated webinar on June 14th. So prepare for a, a small world premiere. And then the rest is for our next webinar. But there's no time to waste. Let's just bring it on. So go into SolidWorks. And then show all of these new and enhanced tools that we have. As you might know, if you have a sheet metal part, uh, you can right click on that and you can export to DXF or DWG. Now it's going to take a second and then I'm just going to cancel out of this one. So now basically I can save this as a DXF file. And I can select that it's sheet metal and hit OK. A window will then eventually pop up and I wonder why they didn't make a maximize button for this, but basically you would make this window bigger. The thing is, in this part, we have countersink holes from the back side and from the front side. So we need to do some manual work to get rid of these holes or else they are going to be cut wrongly on our laser cutter. So this, you might already know, exists in, in SolidWorks, but it's just a lot of work. So what we actually did is that now you can create your drawing and we have this DXF sheet that you already know. Um, I can actually just create a new drawing from, from this one. I have a, a sheet with predefined views, so that makes it a bit more easy. So you can do it on the fly on your own, fully and totally manual. So you drag in a flat pattern and you get this from SolidWorks. And this comes in, in, in this case, a, a one to two uh, scale. So you need to set that at one to one to make sure you have a correct DXF. Um, SolidWorks provide bent lines. Uh, dotted lines mean that it's from the backside and a full line means that it's a bent that you can see from this line. So it bends up and the other one bends down. Um, some people would like to have dimensions on this. So they go in and add dimension. We have the full length, we have a length from here and to, if I can fit that line to here and so on. So we, we start building up all of these bending dimensions for, for whoever is going to bend this eventually uh, to make the process a lot more easy. And 
then you might need to have a coaching profile as well and then you would need to go in and, and hide or delete these ones really a lot of work so basically what we did to eliminate all of that manual work is we have now a thing called bending sheet if you press that one we're going to create a sheet defined as you want and insert some ordinate dimension to the bent lines from the far left and the lower edge and then the full extent of the part and then to the bends itself and we can of course add our own customized bent nodes as well then we might need to cut this so i need to have a cutting profile and we have enhanced that quite a bit and this is something that a lot of you guys have been requesting we now support that so pressing that cutting profile is going to clean up that view and insert that and we remove all of the annotation as well as that circle that went around this hole because that was a uh, countersink hole. So really easy way of working. Let's have a look at a, a different part because you could argue that, well, it's easy when it's just two lines I need to remove. So in this case, it's a bit more complicated part. Uh, we have the same issue. We have holes coming in from the front side as well as the back side. So running this will do exact same job. This time I'm not going to explain, I'm just going to do it so you can see just how fast it is. So I'm going to create a cutting profile in this case first. It will run the cleaning and then I'm going to create a bending sheet and that's it. So now all of my tasks have been taken care of. I have a perfectly good DXF sheet no issues, I can just bring this to the cutter and run it. And I have my perfectly dimensioned bending sheet as well. One of the things that we support since Custom Tools 2017 SP0 is actually the bend lines. So we have the bend lines as well as bend nodes. And you can use those however you like for the bending sheets and the DXF sheet. Let me just show you the options for this. <clears throat> We add some new stuff to the profile options. So now we have the cutting profile options. And in here you can create the sheet name, the DXF sheet, that would be this guy. You can select to use a node template. Now, the drawing that I have in the background have a, a node attached to it. And if you are not sure where to get those, they are defined in the nodes template. So you can freely define the nodes that you are going to insert with the view and just make things happen. Then you can define the paper size for the cutting profile. Basically, it doesn't really matter. In many cases, you just want a blank page and that could be any size for the DXF export later on. It really doesn't matter because we don't see the size of the paper. So we only see the contour anyway. The new stuff that we added is the show only silhouette edges. And this is going to clean up our model view and take care of, for instance, chamfers that you may have, countersinks, counter balls. So everything will be perfect. Uh, we even remove the three quarter circle from threaded holes. So everything is hopefully good. Yeah, that was the plan I, anyway. And in here as well, you can see that we can insert the bend lines and bend nodes and the bent nodes can be customized to your liking. We support the default uh, bent node settings that you have in SolidWorks, but you can also type in your own text here if you want to. Then we have a task setting, and I'm not going to cover this in, in this webinar. This will be for, for the next webinar. The same is true for the bending sheet. Uh, we can define the bent sheet name, node template to use, and then we have some sheet format size to use. In this case, I'm running the same as in first sheet. So whatever is the first sheet is going to be my bending sheet as well. I could also select based on the first sheet. So if I set that, then all the way to the right, I can make some mapping. So I can say, well, if the first sheet, for instance, is an A, let's say A3, then my bending sheet should always be A3 awesome. And then I can select rules and define, well, if my first sheet is this, then use that as my bending sheet. So you have full control of the output. 
You can also select a predefined standard, so you always run with the same size. You can say user defined, type in a value, or you can select custom and bring in any sheet format you want. And then you have the option not to show the sheet format. Uh, for the bending sheet, I would think you would need the sheet format, but you have the option to turn it off. And you also have the option to actually prompt during the creation of the bending sheet. Then again, additional options, show bent lines and notes, and then a task setting for defining this when run as a task. And we are not going to cover that today either. Okay. Now that I am in here, I'm going to show you a setting that we also added for SP0, and that is related to the printing. So if I go to my print properties, you can now add new printing rules, and I can just select something in here, A4, that's fine. Then in here, we have the option now to scale to fit or to scale at 100%. Now, scale to fit is going to rely entirely on your printer settings. So if you have ever had issues where your printouts are actually slightly smaller or even bigger than your expected drawing, then you should definitely go for the scale 100%. That would make things work exactly how you would suspect them to. We also have a a source, so if you have a, a multi-function printer, so perhaps A4 and A3, then you can define in here which tray to pick the paper from. Going out of that one, let's have a look at uh, the thing that we had for quite some time, but never really promoted. If you are running a CNC shop and you are manually programming machines, then you might realize that you need coordinates and not dimensions. A part like this one is fully dimensioned, but the nose of this could be a hard to get coordinate. You'd have to calculate that. So basically what we did is we have created something called a court node. So I'm just going to open up the drawing for this file and show how the court node is working. So I need to activate this for you because in here I want to insert court nodes. The court nodes can be found in the custom tools toolbar. I can then create a new group, add a coordinate point to this location, and then start creating nodes. So now I just pick the points that I want to extract from my drawing view and they are aligning perfectly. They're following the same logic that you have in, in SOLIDWORKS. So we get these placement lines, guidelines, you could say. And basically you just pick them all. And notice that we just pick this point with no calculation at all. This is done fully automated. So now we have the perimeter of the part file, and now we just need to figure out where these cutouts are located and the size of those. So if I select the hole where I select it, I will get the circle diameter as well as the center point X and Y is 60. This is true also for radius. So I can extract that with no problem at all. When I'm satisfied, I can just hit stop. And then I can actually group all of these nodes into one entity, so now they move together. So just a really nice tool for you all to know exists if you are running manual CNC programming. Okay, so basically that is all there is to it. Now I'm going to introduce to you something new because we have a, a new tool coming. It's already available in SP1. Uh, and you should definitely learn about that as well. So if I go into my options for a short second, I'm just going to explain about the court node as well, now that we are getting in here. So the court node options are defined from here. You can define how to show coordinates. If you want to draw error heads on the nodes, maybe you want to have axis inserted, node size and the precision of the dimension to insert. Um, but that's not, so interesting. What is interesting is now that we have a new way of exporting our products. So if I create a new export profile, 
And I have to tell you that all customers running Custom Tools Professional will have this from SP1. Um, this interface was slightly changed. Now we have a drop down where you can select to use a Cloud Connect. And then we can export our bill of material to a Cloud Repository. Now, why do I want to do that? Well, basically, let me show you in a few seconds. You define everything as you would always do. If you want to have indented assemblies, are there any tasks that you would run during this export? Yeah, for sure. You would probably create a PDF file. You might create DXF. You might create e-drawing, whatnot. And then when you are ready, you just hit OK. I already created one very basic one. so. You can insert the drawing fields that you would like or the labels that you would like uh, to appear later on. And you will see that in a few seconds. And then basically that's it. So when that is set up, as you would set up any export profile, you would then go into your part file, for instance, and run the export. Now I select the export profile called Cloud Connect and run the export. It's going to connect to a remote repository and I can say login and select where do I want to publish this bill of material as well as all the files that I have in this list. So I can select one or multiple and run the export. And this is going to go pretty fast. Uh, so I'm not going to screw up uh, the repository right now. So I'm just going to show what we already have in here. And log in. Not sure why I was locked out, but anyway, I'm going to log in. So this is where we store all of the information that we export. Imagine that you have a bunch of subcontractors and they need to have your files. They need to know how many items they need to produce and yeah, basically just everything. They need PDF files of your drawings. They need a step file to manufacture from. Uh, they need a DXF file. We can export everything into the structure and the receiver can then open up and look at what we have sent. So in this case, we have a conveyor. Properties can be added to this and then you can have a look at the model file. Looks like that. And you can have a, a look at the PDF file, for instance. So everything you want to include can be included in these packages. So it's really nice and simple way of working with subcontractors because now you don't have to send out any emails anymore. So if your subcontractor was attached to this, he or she would receive an email that new package available and log in and have a look at the order that we placed. So this is going to be a full webinar uh, called Cloud Connect. It's going to run on the June 14th, uh, I guess around 10 Central European time. Not entirely sure. You will definitely get a, a mail about that. So be sure to, uh, to stay tuned for this one. This is going to be quite interesting to follow. And with that, this is all we had to show for you today. Uh, we will run one more webinar with the new things for 2017 SP1 on Thursday, the 8th, 8th of June, same time as today. Here we will have a look into the batch conversion because we added quite a bit here as well. We are open for questions when the recording is stopped. But first, I want to thank you all for attending this webinar and I hope to see all of you for the next one. Thank you and have a nice day. We are in the life-saving business. We kill your routines before they kill you.